Welcome back everybody and happy Christmas Eve Eve for those of you who celebrate Christmas. Um, my name is Nicholas and this is Investing Against the Grain. I want to make a quick episode today to talk about ideologies and ways of investing. And I think the best way to talk about this is really to use Tesla as an example. So a lot of people tend to be value investors or momentum investors or, you know, just conservative investors, you know, whatever label you want to have. And I thought it'd be helpful to explain how I invest. I mean, after all, the whole point of this channel is to be uh, investing against the grain. And so what do I do? How do I make my decisions on what to invest in? Well, that's a great question. And I was watching CNBC today, as you can see back there, while I was designing um, this data center for, for a customer, and I was just listening to it in the background. And they were talking about Tesla, and they were talking about how the competition's coming, how Ford's ramping up, how the Chinese are coming, how Volkswagen is doing all this great stuff. And, you know, I'm just sitting there listening like, yeah, yeah, you guys really don't seem to know what you're talking about. You're behind the times and they're what they're talking about is like everybody's gonna get there everyone's gonna get to electric vehicles and it's not gonna be a tesla only market and i can make all these arguments why tesla will dominate and it will continue to dominate but there's a fundamental principle that seems like everybody keeps forgetting and for me it's the way i invest when i invest i think about what's the next product what's what's the not even product what's the future look like what's the future going to be and let me take a step back and give you an example. One of my first investments ever when I was still in high school was in Apple. And the reason I invested in Apple was first because of Microsoft. I did some research and I was trying to figure out how I wanted to make my first investment and what company and what I was interested in. I, I really had no clue. And so I was just sitting there on the interwebs, playing around Google, just searching different things, trying to make a, a very good decision. And I came across this thing called um, the Microsoft Surface, and it's not what you think right now is Microsoft Surface. This was a table, and it was a table, it's like a coffee table where people could go up, and if they're having cocktails or, or food or, or whatnot, they could put their credit card on the table, they could you know, split the bill right there on the table, and it, it was this fundamental new technology where you could touch the screen and move things around. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing, that's the future, without a doubt. And so fast forward to maybe two weeks later, I'm sitting there geeking out by Microsoft and all of a sudden I stumble upon these Apple forums and these leaked rumors of Apple coming out with a new phone that would have this touchscreen technology. And that was when I really decided, oh, this is the right move. This is the way to go. And at the time, I was a huge Apple fanatic. I loved my, my iPod. I could sit there and you know, spin a little wheel. I, I was obsessed with my iPod. I thought this thing was absolutely amazing. It was better than any other MP3 player. It was better than any CD player. It was obviously better than any cassette player, any Walkman. And I decided Apple would be my first investment because I thought that was the future. And I was an Apple for a very long time. And then I transitioned into Amazon. Now with Amazon, everybody was talking about how it's a book company, but then I came across their idea of what they were calling the cloud, right? Or in other words, them offering a managed service for data centers for customers, where customers could focus on the applications versus focusing on the hardware and the networking and setting up, you know, just all the, all the SOC compliances that go in with data centers and have, getting out of the hardware space is essentially what customers want to do. And Amazon was thinking about this ahead of time. At the same time, Amazon was thinking about how do we get things to customers as efficiently and as fast as possible, right? How do we get away from brick and mortar? And for a long time, I was all about that. And I, I knew this was the future because I remember having to go online. I would buy like four or five pair of shoes. I used to play basketball. And I'd buy four or five pair of shoes, have them all delivered. I try them on in my bedroom. And I'm like, okay, I want this pair and I'd return the rest. And to me, that was gonna be the future. It just wasn't as efficient yet. And so that led me to invest into Amazon in 2000, what was it, 2013, 2014? Yeah, 2013, 2014, I, I put a lot of money, the majority of my money into Amazon. And now this has led me to Tesla. So then in about 2019, I started to transition everything into Tesla and I just got more and more aggressive into Tesla. And it wasn't even the whole idea of electrification or electric vehicles that made me go into Tesla. 
What got me into Tesla was full self-driving. The idea of having autonomous vehicles. I, I actually had a sit down with a uh, local developer here in uh, downtown St. Petersburg. Uh, his name's Jonathan Dow. Jonathan Dow. He's uh, he's uh, you know famed and attributed with uh, creating the concepts of pop-ups in, in Manhattan. So you know if you want to take a look at him, his background, fascinating man, very um, very charismatic, uh, very out there thinker. But we went to a local Cuban spot and we just had a sandwich and we just went. To, we just started talking. And we started talking about the future and what's going to happen to real estate all around. And we started talking about Tesla and autonomous driving and things of that nature. And it was so funny because I was already into Tesla and we started talking about this. And, you know, I've always been an Elon Musk fan. I think any engineer has to, you know, tip their hat to Elon and have this just am amazing amount of respect for him. And so I already knew about Elon, knew about Tesla, knew about SpaceX. Um, I, I actually had a, uh, a job offer at SpaceX at one point, but I didn't feel like moving out to Hawthorne. Uh, again, I, I like being on the East Coast here, but that's a whole nother story. Anyways, so so yeah, so with, with talking to Jonathan, it was very clear to me that autonomous vehicles was the future. When would it happen? I don't know. I mean, Jonathan seemed convinced it would happen um, by 2020 and obviously it hasn't happened yet. But this is why I invest in the Tesla. And I think this is what people are missing. Everyone's so focused on the electric vehicle and the electric segment. And, oh, look what Ford's doing, GM. Oh, they're cashing up the Chinese. Nobody sees what's happening. Everybody's missing missing it again. And it's it's so funny because this is the next thing. I know everybody keeps talking about Meta and Web3 and all that. And, you know, I don't want to be one of those people who who's just, you know, getting older. And so they're wrong about something because they just can't see it. But I really think that autonomous driving is the next big thing. I don't think it's Web3. I don't think it's us getting into the metaverse. I, I really will it happen. Will something of that nature, you know, I'm sure something like that will happen. Uh, I think more so augmented reality will be more so the next thing rather than us living in this virtual world. But he here's the way I distill things. At the end of the day, something like the iPhone had a efficiency and utilitarian use and need for it, all right? Something like AWS, something like um, Amazon.com, right? Where we can go buy things, the e-commerce business, something like what they did even for books had an efficiency and a utilitarian need for it. Something like FSD, autonomous driving, there is an efficiency and utilitarian need for it, right? That is what we gravitate towards. That's where technology tends to always send us. Now, something like Web3 or the metaverse, it's cool, it's, it could be fun, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's very utilitarian. I don't think it has a, a big need or efficiency in life, the way at least that Mark Zuckerberg has described it. Could there be good benefits and efficiencies and utilitarian needs for it? Sure, but I don't think the way it's being talked about marketed is, is it. I think what's even closer right now is this idea of autonomous driving, and I think Tesla's the closest to it. Today, we should get the release of 10.8, which according to Elon should arguably be called uh, FSD Beta 11. So we'll see how much of a step change this is, but I think this is where the future is going. And so just to round this out, what type of investor am I? I, I I'm an investor who likes to look into the future and see what's next. And I'm not saying that I am this amazing person to predict what's next, but I think some of these things are just pretty damn obvious, especially once they've already happened, right? To, to predict FSD and autonomous driving, like that, that's not something that you had to have all this foresight for. It's happening now. You just have to look around and see it. With Apple, once the iPhone came out, this was a no brainer. I got lucky because I got into it before the iPhone came out. So I got very lucky there. I mean, that's just a matter of timing, right place, right time, seeing the right articles, right? Go down the wrong, the right rabbit hole. You get lucky. But with, with Amazon, I saw it, I saw what was happening and I recognized, oh, this is a big opportunity, right? Is this something that would provide value to my life? Is this something that would allow me to be more efficient? Is this something that would change my day to day and give me more hours in my, in my life? Yes, of course it is. Absolutely. So, so that, that's what I, I base a lot of my investments on. What's the next thing to add more efficiency and add more utilitarian needs to people's lives. And that to me is the next technology. And that is what, where you should invest your money. Now, 
Uh, disclaimer, none of this is investment advice. Just I'm, I'm an engineer. I have nothing to do in finance other than my own portfolio. Um, I, I am financially independent. So, you know, that should speak for itself. You know, I, I've done pretty well. I, I do pretty decent. Um, I've made some good calls. So not saying it's, uh, you know, repeatable, but I think Tesla is a no brainer. And when people are talking about where they should invest their money and what's next, Tesla is next. Tesla hasn't even started in my opinion. The movement of autonomous vehicles is the next thing. And, you know, I, I talk about this to people all the time. We saw that, you know, 2010 to 2020 was essentially the era of Apple and Amazon. All right. And you can even throw Nvidia in there if you want. 2020 to 2030 is going to be the decade of Tesla. It will be the decade of Tesla. I have no doubt about it. It'll be the decade of us going electric of us doing more remote work and us having autonomous vehicles. I adamantly believe that by say 2025 at the latest, we will see robo taxis out there. We will see more people driving autonomously. So this is where I think the movement's going. And so when I hear people on CNBC talking about the competition and tests uh, for Tesla with Ford and GM and the Chinese and the Volkswagen, it's like they are missing it. They do not see what's right in front of their face. All they are thinking about is batteries, uh, the amount of vehicles they can produce, the, the drivetrain. Listen, that those were conversations to be had five years ago. Right at this point, Tesla's just you know iterating on top of that. Everything they're doing is more so evolutionary, not so much revolutionary. So you want to look for what's the next revolutionary thing, and the next revolutionary software, the next revolutionary revolutionary product is full self-driving. It's FSD. It's autonomous vehicles. All these other companies, the, the GMs, the Fords, the Chinese, everyone, they're me too companies. That's all they are. Me too companies. They're all me too companies and they're no different than what we've seen with, with, uh, HP and, and Dell and even Azure and AWS Azure, you know, unlike most actually is doing really well. They're giving AWS to run for their money. But the whole point is that when you're a me too company, you're behind the times and Tesla is not a me too company. They are hurt. They are iterating on what they have. They're evolving it while everybody else is just trying to get to that revolution point. All right. It's literally like Tesla has hit the, the, uh, industrial age and everybody else is still in the stone age trying to get to the industrial age. Like th that's where we are right now. Uh, so, so th those are just my thoughts. That's just a little bit about what I look into when it comes to investing. There aren't that many companies that are doing things that are revolutionary that are, are going to be coming out in the immediate future. So to me, Tesla is where the smart money should be. I, and I know, okay, we go up and we go down, we go up and down. That's, that's what the stock market is, right? Look at us today. We ripping up higher, even after yesterday, no pullback, no anything. And what's on the horizon for Tesla in the short term? Well, in the short term, we got FSD 10.8 coming out tonight, plus whatever Christmas package, you know, that, um, that Elon sent out. And actually I, I'm pretty sure all this is just came out like maybe within the last hour. We also have uh, Q4 deliveries coming out. We've got Q4 earnings coming out, and then Elon's going to give a product roadmap during that call. We have uh, Giga Berlin opening. We have Giga Austin opening. We, we just have so much happening. And again, what's being just masked and hidden behind all this because people only care about well, what do you give us this quarter or next quarter? What people are missing is FSD. And what is the status of it? Where is it? How is it progressing? If you live your life quarter by quarter, if you live your investments quarter by quarter, and that's what's important to you, you're going to miss out on the bigger opportunity. So like I always say, if you are going to invest, make sure you invest and you're not gambling. Think about the long term, all right? Your investment thesis, in my opinion, should be five to 10 years out, not quarter by quarter. Okay. We're going to leave it there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy your Christmas Eve Eve. If you celebrate Christmas, if you don't, cheers to you. I hope you have a, a good rest of your week. Uh, I might put out one more video tomorrow. We'll see. It depends what's going on with the family. Um, for all my Norwegian uh, viewers out there, uh, my my fiance is actually upstairs right now making making some uh, lefse. So I'm going to go help her out. I already peeled all the potatoes this morning. So uh, we're going to leave it there again. I'm going to go help her out before I get yelled at. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Peace.